Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 6. The apostle Paul says it is he meaning Jesus who has qualified us making us to be fit and worthy and sufficient as ministers and dispensers of a new covenant, salvation through Christ, not ministers of the letter of the legally written code, but of the Spirit. For the code of the law kills, but the Holy Spirit makes alive. If we can learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit in our everyday lives and everything that we do, then everything that we do is going to be full of life. It's going to have an anointing on it. When God's approval is on something, it's so much better than when you're just trying to push something in the flesh, trying to make something happen because you had a plan in your mind and now you're trying to make it all work out. Being led by the Spirit is one of the greatest benefits of being a new covenant believer other than just your salvation and knowing that your sins are forgiven, that you're going to go to heaven and live eternally with God. It's a wonderful thing to have this privilege of being led by the Spirit. Every believer can hear from God. Every believer has the privilege of being led by the Spirit. That means that you really don't have to run around and ask other people all the time what you should do in situations. God will show you what to do. But you know what? In order to be led by the Spirit, you've got to have a little confidence. And you've got to have a little bit of courage and a little bit of boldness because sometimes it's a little bit scary until you get experience stepping out into things that the only proof that you have of whether or not you're right is what you sense in here and what you read in here. We would much rather be able to just go to our hotline to heaven, <laughs> dial up God, Could I speak to God, please? <laughs> oh, God, so good to talk to you. Yeah, this is Joyce down here on earth. Listen, um, I, uh, I need to know what you want me to do in this um, situation I've got. But you know, really, while we're talking, I'd just like to know really what you want me to do with my whole life. I'm kind of confused and <laughs> mixed up about the whole thing. You know, what's, I mean, since I've got you, you know, what's the call on my life? And, you know, what's going to happen with my kids and, you know, how, how's all this stuff going to, huh, what, huh? Oh, you want me to read the word? Oh, oh, you mean you want me to act like I believe it? Oh, oh. you put your Holy Spirit in me and you want me to learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit, huh? Well, wouldn't it just be a whole lot easier if you'd just tell me? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I think if you'd just tell me, it would just make everything a lot easier. Because, you know, that being led by the Spirit stuff, huh, you got to go now? <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, okay. You already told me once. You're not going to tell me again. Okay. <laughs> I get it. All right. Well, love you, Lord. Bye. <laughs> Everybody wants to know how to hear from God. <laughs> well, you know, it would be nice if God, we, we could just pick up the hotline to heaven and make a phone call and God, you know, I just say to the Lord sometimes, if you would just come and sit down here, just five minutes, we could get my whole deal straightened out here. <laughs> but you know, it's interesting. God really is very mysterious in some ways and, um, which pretty much means that you can't always grasp everything he's doing with your brain. We, we really, as spiritual beings, we have to learn how to function and flow in the spirit. We have to learn how to discern things spiritually. And uh, it seems like that it would be so easy for God just to tell us, but he wants us to do the search. He wants us to 
walk in faith. And to be honest, he wants us to learn and to grow and to stretch and to step out and to sometimes even make mistakes and learn by that and step back and then not be afraid to step out again. And you know what? Every single person in here can learn to be dynamically led by the Holy Spirit, which literally means to hear from God, but you're not going to do it sitting around idle asking everybody else what you should do every time you have a situation come up in your life. You're going to have to get with God, know the Word, learn, learn how to follow peace, and you can be led by the Spirit. Paul said, this is our job now as ministers of the new covenant, to no longer teach people to be led by the old code of written laws. We still follow the moral law. It's written in our heart now. But we're not to be led by the, by the laws of the old covenant or even the laws that we make up or sometimes even the laws of denominational religion. Everybody's got a lot of laws and rules that they want us to follow. But Paul said, what I'm here to teach you is how to be led by the Spirit. And so that's what I want to talk to you about today, how to be led by the Holy Spirit for yourself. Verse 7, now if the dispensation of death, which was living under the law, that was engraved in letters on stone, the ministration of the law, if it was inaugurated with such glory and splendor that the Israelites were not able to look steadily at the face of Moses because of its brilliance, and if you're not familiar with that, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai after having received the law that really ended up, although the law itself was holy and perfect because men could not keep it, it actually ministered death to them. And so, but even when Moses received that law and that system, he had such glory on his face that he had to cover it up with a veil. So he's saying, if that administration brought that kind of glory, verse 8, why should not the dispensation of the Spirit the spiritual ministry whose task it is to cause men to obtain and be governed by the Holy Spirit, why should that not be attended with much greater and more splendid glory? You know what? We have got the most glorious opportunity in our lives. What kind of a privilege is it to say, God, Spirit, lives in me, and I will always know what I need to do when I need to do something because God leads me and guides me through His Word and by His Spirit. Come on, give God a praise for that. And then 1 John 2, 27 talks about the anointing. And the anointing is really the presence, the power, and the ability of God. I preach by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I don't even have the proper education to do what I'm doing, which is going to be part of my message today. I don't have all this in my head. Now, I study, and I fill my head full of things, but it would all just get mixed up coming out of my mouth if the Holy Spirit wasn't anointing me to do this. And because I'm anointed to do it, it's not hard for me. I, it, this is not hard for me. It's hard work, but it's not hard for me. And people say to me sometimes, well, do you ever get nervous when you stand in front of these big crowds? I actually really don't. Now, I did a little bit in the beginning because I didn't have any experience. But I've seen God come through time after time after time after time after time after time. Matt Redmond is anointed as a songwriter and a worship leader. Christy is anointed as a singer. Her voice is so beautiful, and she brings that gift to the body of Christ. And you are also anointed. You might be anointed to be a mom or a dad or a business person or an intercessory prayer person or the beautiful people that are anointed for help. So, oh my goodness, what would we do without the people that just say, I just want to help? I love the helpers. I mean, I would have went stark raving mad a long time ago if I didn't have helpers. And the older I get, the more helpers I need. I mean, I do interesting things like forget my phone and forget what direction to walk in. And I mean, I swear, I can come out of a hotel room and go the wrong direction every time I come out of the door. I don't know what my problem is. I can get lost in a bathroom if I'm not careful. I mean, I'll go in a bathroom and end up trying to think I'm going out the door and go in the broom closet in the bathroom. So thank God for helpers. But 1 John 2, 27, if we can take a look at that real quick. But as for you... The anointing, the sacred appointment, 
The unction, and I love that word unction. You don't hear that too much anymore today. But to me, that's Holy Ghost oomph. It's like, huh? <laughs> that's unction. It's like, it just, it's just like, huh? I can do it. <laughs> Holy Ghost unction. I mean, even if it's like looking at that dirty house you've got, and you're like, I know God wants me to get this cleaned up. I believe I'm anointed today for it. Here I come. I'm going to get this place clean. Anointing is not just for ministry. Anointing is for every single day of your life and every single task that you do. Let's don't over-spiritualize the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our life and make it so floaty and spiritual sounding that it never does us any practical good in our everyday lives. You have God's power to do whatever you need to do. And you can be led by the Spirit in how to raise your children. You can know when you need to correct them and when you need to give them mercy and let something go. It's good to have all the parenting books, but you know what? Sometimes you can't find your problem in the book. <laughs> and I raised four kids, and we didn't have any of those books. We had one parenting book by some doctor named Dr. Spock, and uh, <laughs> the dude was about that thick. And I mean, if you had any kind of a problem, you went to that book, and it didn't give you much practical advice on raising kids. And I was raised like a complete idiot, and still, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, I raised four kids that are raising God today. I mean, that are serving God today and have 10 grandchildren. So look at me. You don't have to be afraid that you're not up for whatever it is that you've got in front of you to do. Do you hear me? You do not have to be afraid that you are not able to do whatever it is that's in front of you to do. There's somebody here today that needs to hear that. You do not have to be afraid that you are not up for whatever it is that's in front of you. Even things that you don't know about yet, you can live with the confidence, whatever comes in my life any day, I have got the Holy Ghost oomph to do what I need to do. I'm up for it. I can do it in Jesus' name. So this anointing that we have, but as for you, the anointing, the sacred appointment, the unction which you received from him, you did receive it, abides permanently in you. So the anointing of God is in you and it's there to stay permanently. So you have no need that anyone should instruct you. Now that doesn't mean that we don't need the gift of teaching or that we never need a word of advice. But there's a general principle here that you don't need to run to somebody else all the time to find out what you should do. You know, most of the time we run and ask other people what we ought to do. And if you look at their life, it's obvious they don't even know what they're doing. So, what, you know, why not just go to God? But just as his anointing teaches you concerning everything and is true and is not false, you must abide, live in him. Now, one last scripture, Romans 7, verses 4 through 6. Well, not one last scripture, but one last one for this section. Say, I can hear from God. I am led by the Holy Spirit. Romans 7, verse 4. Likewise, my brethren, you have undergone death as to the law through the crucified body of Christ, so that now you may belong to another. To him was raised from the dead in order that you might bear fruit for God. Now, what does that mean? Literally, I'm not trying to do a teaching here on the difference in law and grace, but if you try to live under the law, if you have too many rules and regulations for your life, you're going to push the Holy Spirit right out. And pretty soon those things are going to begin to minister death to you. And I have lots of little funny stories that I could tell you. I, I, I want to try to stay on track here today, but somebody asked me the other day uh, in, in a group that I was doing some question and answers, how long do you pray every day and how long do you pray in the Spirit? And I was so glad they asked the question because I said, I don't know. <laughs> you know why I don't know? Because I don't count anymore. Now, you ain't hearing me. <laughs> I, I don't count. I, I'm not keeping a record. I don't get brownie points if I pray a long time. And God's not mad if I don't pray as long. What he wants me to do is just pray when I need to and pray till I'm done 
and, and make prayer like breathing and not get into some big thing where, well, you know, I prayed one hour today and so now that I've done my spiritual duty. <laughs> See, there's freedom when you're led by the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not suggesting we don't have discipline. I'm a big fan of discipline. And I think if you have not developed a prayer life yet, then maybe you need to ask God if there's some kind of a discipline pattern that you should follow for a little while. But sooner or later, you're going to have to cut all those ties and you're going to have to give yourself to the Holy Spirit and say, I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit. A woman came to me one time and she said, Joyce, everybody that I know is going to the early morning prayer meeting at church. And she said, I don't feel like I'm supposed to go. And she said, they're just making me feel bad. And I'm just asking you, what's wrong with me that I don't want to go? Have you ever not wanted to do something that everybody else was doing and they kind of made you feel bad because you were the one that didn't want to do it? Well, how many people are bold enough to stand their ground and say, I'm not going to follow the crowd. I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit. And I don't have to give an explanation. I don't have to give a reason. It's just not what I feel like I'm supposed to do. You know what? Not as many as there should be. You know what most people would do? Most people would cave in to that people pressure and they would go and they would do something that they didn't really feel right about just to keep the people happy. And that's what I'm asking you to stop doing. You know why? It may make them happy, but it ministers death to you. It leaves you empty and drained. So she said, Joyce, what's wrong with me that I don't want to go? And I said, well, probably nothing. Maybe that's just not where God wants you. It might not make any sense to you, but maybe he wants you doing something else. She said, well, now that you say that, you know what I would really love to do? You know what's really in my heart? And you can see the light come in her face. You know, when we're doing what we're supposed to do, there's a light that comes to us. And she said, I would love to babysit all of their kids while they go. <laughs> you know what's so special about that? God wants to meet every need in the body of Christ. If we will stop trying to pressure everybody to do our thing and be like us, then we might see a lot more successes. Now, another way that you can make a law out of these things is we had a woman come to our church one time a long time ago, and she was an anointed intercessor. Oh, my gosh, she was an anointed intercessor. She was, she was a woman that was probably like up, up in her 60s or maybe early 70s, and she said from the day that she was saved, God called her to be an intercessor. She said, I received the Lord. I went to a local Baptist church, asked them if they had a place where I could pray, and I went in there and prayed four hours and continued to do that every day the rest of my life. Oh, well, she had the power of God on her. I'm telling you what, when she opened her mouth, you could sense the power of the Holy Spirit. So I thought, I'm doing that. <laughs> Come on now, is anybody with me? You know what I'm talking about. Man, if I do what she did, then I'm going to be like she is. Oh, that is such a mistake that we make when we do that. So I tell you what, I picked a room in my house. And I put myself a clock in there. And I got a notepad. And I did the really dumb thing. I announced to everybody that from now on, I am going to pray the first four hours of every day, and I don't want anybody disturbing me. This is what I'm going to do now. So I went in there the first day, and I'm here to tell you that I prayed about everything that I could even begin to think of to pray about. I mean, I prayed through. I was done, and I looked at my clock, and five whole minutes had gone by. <laughs> And I thought, oh, I've got three hours and 55 minutes, and I have to stay in here because I can't let the people think. Come on. You know, God, I don't know, it's been several years ago, and God actually confronted me. He said, I want you to stop counting things. Stop counting how many people are in your meetings. Stop counting how many pieces of mail you get. Stop counting how long you pray and how many chapters of the Bible you read every day. You're only doing it to impress yourself, and I don't like it. I can just sense the freedom that some of you need. And you know, even once having 
been set free. We have to stand fast in that liberty. Because I'm telling you, these legalistic demons, these legalistic spirits, that religious thing that tries to hang on all of us is always there trying to make us think it's not safe to not follow the rules. You've got to follow the rules. Well, we have a new rule. We have a new law, and it's the law of love. As long as I'm walking in love, I'm not going to get in too much trouble. That's the highest law. And we have a new rule. It's called following the promptings and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But Joyce, I don't know how to do that. Well, you know what? You'll learn pretty fast. You step out, oh, that didn't work. Or, oh. Wow, I think I'll, think I'll try that again. <laughs> wow, I think this is really God. And I tell you what, if your relationship with God is not exciting to you, then this is probably the thing that's missing for you. Because the thing that makes our walk with God exciting is you never know from one day to the next what the Holy Spirit's going to come up with. But if you're not following him, you'll never find out. And if you do follow him, it's going to be exciting. I'll bet, Matt, that you get songs sometimes when you least expect to get a song, don't you? I mean, sometimes I'll be driving down the road and see a billboard and get a title for a message. See, God's not just in church. He's not just on the other end of the red hotline. He's everywhere. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere that you go. He wants to go to the grocery store with you. He wants to go to work with you. He wants to help you with your, with your work, with your parenting, with everything you do. And I tell you what, I'm just so excited about my relationship with God. And the longer I'm in relationship with God, the more excited I get. And I love to study things about being led by the Holy Spirit. Verse, uh, Romans 7, verse 5, I guess we're at now. When we were living in the flesh, mere physical lives, the sinful passions that were awakened and aroused up by what the law makes sin were constantly operating in our natural powers, in our bodily organs, in the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh, so that we bore fruit for death. Okay, now what does that mean? When you make something a law that you have to do it or you have to not do it. Let's say that you have to not do it. Like if, I, if you were in a room with me and I said, you see that door over there? Don't you ever open that door. Don't ever look to see what's behind that door. Do you understand it? That's the one rule of the house. You must not ever look behind that door to see what's there. And so then I said, now I'm going to go to the grocery store and I, I'm going to come back. But don't you look behind that door. Make sure that you don't disobey me and look behind that door. <laughs> I can promise you that 99.9% .9 of you, when I was gone, would look behind the door. And then, you know why it ministers death to you? Because then you would feel guilty because you did the thing that you knew that you weren't supposed to do. Then when I came back, you'd feel like you had to hide and shrink from me in case I ask you if you look behind the door because then you're going to have to lie to me and then it's just going to make things a whole lot worse. Well, this is exactly what we do in our relationship with God. When we make things to be laws, you have to pray one hour every day and you have to read your Bible through every year and that means you have to read six chapters every day. You have to do that. Well, you know what? You're going to go. <laughs> you know, it might be okay for a few days. You might be like me. I had my Bible reading calendar, and as long as I was getting my check marks, I was in good shape. We love check marks. The flesh loves check marks. <laughs> but then when my flesh got worn out because I was making it a law, and by the way, I read six chapters, six chapters every day, but I didn't, I didn't learn a thing. God said to me one day, what'd you learn? I couldn't come up with one thing. <laughs> you know why I wasn't doing it for any kind of quality? I wasn't doing it being led by the Spirit. And it's a good thing to do. I, I know a lot of people who read the Bible through every year. I personally have a difficult time with that because I get in it and because I'm a teacher, I read something that strikes my interest. Now, the next thing I know, I've got out a concordance and a dictionary and notepads and papers and computers, and I'm tracking that thing down. To, that, that's how that message came from motives. 
I read one thing about motives, and I thought, whoa. Well, I didn't finish my Bible reading for the day. I couldn't get my check mark, but I sure got a word from God. Come on. You know, your mind will often lead you away from the things of God. So we need to ask Him to help us be led by the Spirit instead of being led by every thought that falls into our own head. We need to focus on filling up our soul as opposed to just being led by every thought that we think. Let's learn how to think with the mind of Christ. And one of the ways to do that is to really study the Word of God. Well, here we are quickly approaching the end of another year. And as I reflect on everything that God has done throughout 2015, I am amazed. You know, we call 2015 our special year of thanks. And I can't even express how truly grateful I am to God for His goodness and to you, our partners, for your prayers and financial support. You are right there alongside us everywhere that we go in everything that we do, sharing Christ and loving people. It's very humbling to know that God calls us His ambassadors to the world. And whether that means bringing a hot meal to a hungry child, providing clean water to an entire village, rescuing a young woman from human trafficking, or encouraging a family that's going through a difficult time, we'll do whatever it takes to spread God's love across America and around the world. Please go to JoyceMeyer.org where you can take a look at our year in photos to see just some of the lovely people that together we have had the privilege of meeting and helping over the past year. So again, thank you for a great year. Let's continue to share the gospel and help more and more people in 2016. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash partner. En nu, let op. Geloof, liefde, hoop. Stop letting the disappointments of your past dictate your future. Get your hopes up and see what God can do. Durf te hopen. Dit boek zal je inspireren en enthousiast maken. Je mag iets goeds verwachten, omdat God goed is. Bestel nu het boek via internet bij joy-meyer.nl of bel 026 2022 100. Joyce Meyer die is toch van tv? Wat doet ze nog meer? Ze schrijft boeken. Ik hou niet zo van lezen. Er zijn ook dvd's. En wat nog meer? Themaboekjes, mokken. Hé, hey, dat kan ik allemaal niet onthouden. Daarom is er de Joyce Meyer Info- en Productbroschure. Met een overzicht van alle boeken en DVD's. Had dat dan meteen gezegd? Die kan je online bekijken of bestellen. Kosteloos. Met alle informatie over de dagelijkse overdenkingen, Facebook, nieuwsbrief. Niet slecht. Bestel nu ook de Joyce Meyer Info- en Productbroschure. Via joyce-meyer.nl slash brochure of telefonisch. Via 026 2022 100. Super!